All right, going to the Van Halen Immigration House, the very first house that they shared with multiple families. Uh, I don't think anybody's vlogged it before. Um, it's so far it's about four the five miles away from the childhood home it's actually not really close to it at all it's near caltech and um in pasadena and i'm about to find it it looks like a pretty good area um but most people don't know that van the van halen family when they came they had to kind of hole up in a in a temporary apartment and with different families and this happened for a couple different residences besides this apparently so it's a uh, Los Lunas home, even though it's their childhood home where they first bought a home, there were other places they lived prior in Pasadena as they got their feet underneath them. Okay, I'm at 488 uh, Oakland Avenue and there's buildings behind it. And that's where 486 is, I'm sure. So I'm gonna tool around back here and see if I can see it. Okay, this is 486 Oakland Avenue South. It's on the back side of the house. This is where it says the address is, so this is the actual immigration apartment for the Van Halen family when they came over here in the 60s. Cool, huh? And here's another set of apartments behind here. Pretty neat. Yeah, you see the power boxes there. There's three power boxes. So I guess they have three residences inside here. And that's where the three, two or three families the Van Halen shared this with. Pretty cool, right? That's it. Awesome. Way before the child at home, a few years. They live right here. All right, now I'm on Lincoln Avenue in Pasadena, or Altadena actually, and I'm coming to John Muir High School, which is where David Lee Roth went to high school. And uh, the Van Halen's went to Pasadena High but uh, I've never been here, so I'm gonna check it out, vlog it. There it is, John Muir High School. The Mustang, huh? Well, that certainly fits Dave, he was a Mustang for sure. The crazy thing is this is an Altadena proper, so uh, that's interesting. I'm gonna go over to his house from here <clears throat> and see how far we're talking about here on the bus. I don't think it's that far. So I'm about to make a journey to David Lee Ross' house. In his yard at this mansion is where I first saw David Lee Roth on TV on Don Kirshner's rock concert. And when I saw him, I was like so transfixed by his personality. I stayed on the channel and the Unchained Video Live came on. And from then on, it's been all about Van Halen. So uh, I'm here at the uh, genesis of my entire journey right here in Pasadena, California, just about a quarter mile from it. Wow, am I lucky or what? <laughs> the gate is wide open at Rothwood. I have never seen that before. I guess I'll take a look. What do you think? Behind me is David Lee Ross' house, and the gate is open. What the hell? Right after the, the yard back there is where I saw him interviewed. Don Kirshner's rock concert so long ago. Crazy, right? Never seen the gate open here before. Crazy. I don't want to walk in, but I probably shouldn't do that. Guest house <clears throat> where I have documented. Um, they had a guy stay in here, and he was the guy that David um, had record the board tapes with a reel to reel uh, back in the day, and those board tapes out there because of this gentleman that lived. He was liking the hi-fi and stuff, so he, uh, they, they let him live there after they, I think the Ross moved in. And that's kind of the story. So behind this gate, there's a terrace that goes down into the property. And that terrace down in there is where I saw that video where uh, Jim Ladd uh, you know, interviewed David Lee Roth. And that was where and when I saw Van Halen. And here I am. Beautiful morning here in Pasadena. There you go. There's the lawn gardens and terrace in my house. Way up there. Last time I was here, 
I shot this as the opening from Van Halen Trail, so I think I'll do it again. I think I've been here like four or five times. It never has to get paid. giant Eddie Van Halen I never actually been up here because I wouldn't come up here before while he was alive but yeah, well I decided it was time to come check it out up close Big place right beautiful beautiful home All back in there is a 5150 Studios, of course. All right, Brian Tishy came here. My friend Eric Dover came here. My friend Damon Johnson came here. Uh, a bunch of other people I've interviewed have been here, but they've been in the gates into the studio. Pretty cool, right? It's beautiful up here. I think this is the old Gazzari's right there, back in the day. And then, of course, the rainbow. Left, the big tall building is the former riot house, Sunset Riot House. This former riot house, Zeppelin, and all those people made a mess in this place. All right, right here in 1978, we think in December of 78. Van Halen had their platinum party. We'll see photos with David Lee Ross standing about right here with Stevie Nicks and Bonnie Raitt at this platinum party. I th think it was for double platinum from what I can tell. Milton Burrow came. Uh, we had Bonnie Raitt here. You had Stevie Nicks, Rodney Bigenheimer, a whole host of folks with Van Halen. They were all wearing their necklaces that night. I finally found this out. They actually got their necklaces at the Anaheim Stadium gig prior to a run in Europe. And then when they came back, they had them on here. They never actually got given these necklaces that we so know so well in that logo necklace. They never got those until, well, they never got them during the platinum party is what everybody thinks that I think. You know, the platinum party, the platinum necklaces should go together, right? But that's not how it happened. Necklaces were given to them at the Anaheim gig because it was like a homecoming gig. And then they wore them here at the body shop for that particular platinum party. So that's kind of the story of the platinum party. Pretty cool. You'll see this picture. I'll put, insert it of David Lee Ross standing about right here. Here I am, famous Sunset Sound. All of the Van Halen albums that we used to love so much, the first ones were recorded here in Hollywood. Here on the Van Halen Trail. There you go. All right, no trip. 
to Southern California would be complete without a trip to the Rainbow Bar and Grill and of course the whiskey. It's been a while, it's been a few years since I've come, so always meet me. Right behind me stands the most famous rock and roll room in the world, probably. The Whiskey and Go-Go, Van Halen, Motley Crue, The Doors, Jimi Hendrix, you name it. This is an interesting fact. They honored uh, Van Halen down here. 1996, right? When you go here to the plaque, that's the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum. They mention everybody but Van Halen in here. <laughs> I'm not sure why that is, but I don't think they ever had a great taste of Van Halen at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, because, because of all the great artists that have played here, Van Halen's one of the biggest. And snubbed again. Alright, this used to be Gazzari's where Van Halen cut their teeth doing covers. It's called One Oak now, but it's been a bunch of different things, but it's the uh, same building. They used to have Bill Gazzari's up here and all that. I came here once. Um, I want to say it was the late '80s that I came here and saw saw a band, and uh, they had the upper deck then, so it didn't have a, you know what split up. So this was towards the end of its life that I saw that band here. But I did go to Gazzari's once, and at least I know where it was. <laughs> and still, there's a building here. That's cool, right? All right, there's the side of the building. That's probably the most identifiable thing about Gazzari's was that whole Gazzari's down the side and all the, the writing on it right here on this wall where it stuck out when you drove past it. It's pretty neat. Well, here I am at the Viper Room. This is where Brian Tissue was talking about they're doing those jams on Monday nights and uh, how they ended up getting Matt Brook here. And Matt Brook saw them and uh, hired them for Eddie Van Halen's private party. That's where all that happened, along with all the other historic things that have happened in the Viper Room, which we all kind of know about. But uh, we don't know when it's going to be gone. It's supposed to be gone, but it's not gone yet. So it's still here. And Maury was saying, we better film it while we can. So I'm filming it. Well, we still can. <laughs> 